What matters most in this life? What is truly of greatest value? You know, it's a tricky question. And there are many things in this world that can pull us in different directions and make it hard for us to determine what truly has the greatest spiritual value. Hello, I'm Ben Driver, and this is Equipping the Saints, where we are striving to equip every member of the body of Christ through the Word of God. And this is your six-minute sermon. Let's get to work. Finding what is of greatest value. You know, it can be a challenge for us. And as I stated, many things pull us in many different directions. There are the greatest things, and then there are good things, and then there are not good things. And all of them are competing for our attention. I think of it in many ways like a flea market or an antique mall. Maybe you're a guy or girl who loves that kind of thing. Maybe you don't so much. But for me, it's something I enjoy. I enjoy going through and, and seeing all the different knickknacks and things. And my, my ADD brain kind of is like, ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this. But you know, sometimes we can get distracted by things that maybe are, let's be honest, a piece of junk. And other times we can find that hidden gem, that great treasure. And so how do we do that? How do we determine what is truly valuable and what is not? And as important as that is in the physical world, it's also of great importance in the spiritual realm. And so I would invite you to turn your Bible to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. And I think in this passage, we're going to find some great insight into how we can follow the words of Jesus when he told us to not lay up for ourselves treasures on earth, but rather to lay up treasure in heaven. He tells us where our treasure is, there our heart is. And it reminds me of what Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. He tells us, if we've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. If you've been raised with Christ, and if you are a Christian who has obeyed the gospel, you have been raised with Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 uh, tells us that we were buried with him in baptism, and we were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised Jesus from the dead. And so if you've been raised with Christ, here's what he tells us to do, to seek the things that are above. That's a word of intentionality. We must be intentional when it comes to seeking the things that are above. That means it's not going to happen by accident. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse uh, 33, I believe it is, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. And so are you being intentional about your walk with God? Are you being intentionable, intentionable, intentional about the things that you are seeking? For many of us, we can seek some things that are good, like maybe our education or our career or our family or our hobbies, but maybe we're not truly seeking first the things that are above. If we're going to find the thing that's of greatest value, that pearl of great price, we need to be intentional. Number two in this passage, I think we see that we need to be thoughtful. He gives us another command in verse two. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things of this earth. Why? He goes on to say, because you've died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. One day Christ is coming back for you. And so we need to be mindful and thoughtful about the things that are above. If I am constantly filling my mind with the junk of this world, I am not going to find what is truly of greatest value. But then lastly, we see here that we need to be thorough. He tells us in this passage to set aside or put away certain things, but rather to put on some certain other things. He tells us to set aside what is earthly in verse 5. He mentions sexual sins. He goes on to mention sins of anger, wrath, and malice, uh, sins of our words. He tells us not to lie to one another, but rather we are to be renewed in our minds and we are to be thorough in setting aside what is earthly. But then in verse 12, he says, instead, to put on what is godly. 
compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, all these things. He tells us we are to put on love above everything else, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. We are to be worshipful. We are to be thankful. The idea here is put away those distracting things of this world that want to pull you away from God and be intentional, be thoughtful, and be thorough about putting on the things of Christ. I love what he says in verse 12. He says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Those are statements of identity. You've been chosen by God. Therefore, seek what's above. You've been made holy by God. That is, you've been set apart. Therefore, seek the things that are above. You are beloved. You are God's beloved child. So seek the things that are above. In many ways, those statements convey a wonderful reality to us that not only are we to look through everything in life and find what is of greatest value, but it teaches us that God looked at us and he found something of great value. You say, oh, I don't know if I'm of great value to God. Well, he paid the price of his son's own blood for you. What could be more valuable than that? And he tells us, you are chosen, you are holy, and you are beloved. Because God finds us souls of great value, let's seek what's above, let's set our minds on what's above, and let's set aside the things of this earth and embrace the things of God. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you want, like, subscribe, share the video, and comment below. Have a wonderful day. God bless.